Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and Independent Photo Imagers. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by Rachel Arbuckle, the founder and CEO of 2000 Paces Photo Organizing, and she's way over there in San Diego, California. Hi, Rachel. How are you today? I'm excellent, Gary. Thanks so much for having me. So who the heck is 2000 Paces Photo Organizing? 2000 Paces in ancient times actually represented a day's journey. Um, and that's where the 2000 paces comes from. We're trying to capture our clients' journeys. Okay. Um, everybody's journey looks different from the inception of the inventory they bring us to the story that we're trying to preserve and capture to mm-hmm. the way that um, they want to enjoy their photos. You didn't start in the photo organizing business. Like almost everybody I've talked to in the photo organizing business who had gotten into it as a business, something happened where they said, oh my gosh, my photo history is super important. I need to help other people preserve their history as well. What was your impetus for getting into the business? Yeah, you're absolutely right. As far as I know, there's no degree out there for photo organizing, although I would argue there probably (laughs) should be. Um, So my history is uh, sort of my journey. Uh, I was in the military Right after high school, I was uh, um, a Navy corpsman for six years, put myself through undergrad and grad school. I was, both my degrees are uh, in the geography department in geographic information systems. So marrying technology with kind of trying to solve puzzles um, has always been something of interest to me, but clearly very different than what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. I worked for some environmental consulting firms. I worked for Sandag, a couple of big government corporations, and decided that I wasn't really enjoying that. And I went off and worked in wealth management on the sales and marketing side. And then that brings us to 2014 in San Diego, of course, there's fires. And now apparently there's tornadoes and hurricanes and floods. But at the time, we only had fires to battle. And... um, So I've been evacuated multiple times from a fire and typically we have a lot of time to gather our things and, um, you know, they give us some warning, but this particular fire started a hundred yards from my home. Um, and what was the cause of it? It actually, it was arson. A teenager apparently was bored and decided to light a tree on fire. Wow. And so devastating because, um, although we did not thankfully lose our home, there were other people in our community who did. Um, And this was an outrageously intense fire. And my neighbor knocked on the door and just pointed to the fire. And I looked over and this is before the fire trucks had come because it was so close. Um, So we just grabbed what we could, you know, obviously family, pets, et cetera, and and left. I grabbed a couple scrapbooks because I was doing that at the time, a couple computers, but that was it. Mm. And I stood at the bottom of the hill looking up and I have photos of my husband and I looking up. And all I could think about was my grandfather's World War II memorabilia that right. somehow I had inherited, right? right? And my children's artwork from preschool and elementary school and photos of my parents and all these things that were all over the house. Some of them were framed on the wall. Some of them mm-hmm. were in boxes and envelopes. And I- And one uh, of a kind, right? I mean, irreplaceable. It's absolutely irreplaceable. It's absolutely irreplaceable. Everything else in the house could have been replaced- but this couldn't. And I had a pit in my stomach, Gary. I, I can't even explain to this day. I get chills thinking about it because I was so worried. And I looked over at my husband and I said, if our home and our photos survive, we need to figure out a way to protect them because I can't go through this horrible feeling again. Right. Um, we had some smoke damage, but overall everything survived. And I started looking into options for preserving our photos and quite honestly, didn't find anything that I thought our photos deserved. Mm -hmm. So I decided to create a solution and I quit Mm -hmm. my corporate job and started 2000 pieces photo organizing. Well, you know, back then there, there were some resources, right? I mean, there's, you know, there, there's some online resources. I think the, uh, you know, the photo organizing 
profession, I guess, is what it's called now, you know, yeah. the Associated Personal Photo Organizer. We're kind of, it was out there, right? But I definitely want to touch on that because you're very involved with that group, which is now the photo uh, managers. But what made you decide it was a business, I guess, is the part I get to. Because, I mean, there are certain people, you know, see a need for something. And, uh, you know, if, if you need to lose a few pounds, you start I mean, working out. Doesn't necessarily mean you want to open a gym. That's right. right. So that's what right. was what was the business case for doing this? Yeah, gosh, that's a great question. Um, and did you have one is the question. Yeah. Did I have <laughs> a business case, right? <laughs> so many questions that were swirling around in my mind at the time. I mean, obviously, I didn't start looking into it thinking I, I create a business that I was, right. you know, doing the corporate job. I was doing the nine to five. I wasn't thrilled with what I was doing. I wasn't passionate about it, but um, I was successful and, you know, we were, we were doing our thing. And I, I think it was the emotions that impacted me so much at the risk of possibly losing our photos that when I started looking Mm -hmm. into options, um, there, a few things struck me. First Mm -hmm. of all, it was very confusing. There were so many different options out there. I was overwhelmed. Do but, but what do you mean by options? You mean like places to get your stuff digitized or? Yeah, places um, places to get it digitized or processes that people recommend or online storage. There were just so many different options and, and for everything. And there were so many, I don't know if I'd even call them options, but just possibilities that right. I didn't, I didn't feel like there was there was anybody or any solution out there that was saying, this is what you should do for your situation. Because I recognize that, you know, my situation and my goal might be different from, you know, somebody else up the street. Um, And so I was so overwhelmed by that. I I was um, trying to, you know, I started obviously just trying to preserve my own photos. And I thought, well, do I, do I ship them out to get them digitized? When I do ship them out, are they going to organize them? Hmm. Um, what if they don't name them? What what's going to happen when they come back? What what is DPI? What is resolution? Why is that important? And then when I get them back, where am I going to store them? And oh, I'm reading that I can't put them on this external drive because I need to back them up. And da 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 da. I was I was so overwhelmed, and I thought I cannot be the only one that feels so overwhelmed and 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 stressed out um, by this. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people just decide, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can for the moment because I've got a graduation coming up or a memorial coming up, right? right? I'm going to take care of what I need right now. Which is not the way to do it, right? I mean, I mean, I've run into many cases where you know, people reach out to me and they go, I need to have all my photo albums scanned because Aunt Betty died in her funeral Friday. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, what? <laughs> Right. You're not gonna, first of all, you're not going to get it done. You're not going to even know what's there and everything else. But right. It's, but it's usually yeah. those kind of life changing events, that, like a fire or an earthquake or a tornado or a yeah. tsunami or something that gets people to think like this. You know, so the idea that there are so many options, you can Google anything, you know, right. you can find anything, but are they the right options for you? Right. Um, are they updated? The software that is recommended is does it make sense? Um, what if you decide to download some software and rename all your files, and now you've inadvertently stripped the metadata? Or and what is metadata? If you do that, you may not even right. know what that why that's important if it's right. important at all, right? Absolutely. And so I think when I started looking into it for myself, I thought, wow, there's so many different facets to this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really important to me to do it right. Right. And I realized that the business need um, was twofold. One is because with all the climate change and everything going on and, and just how we've entered this digital age in such a fast, rapid, powerful way. Sure. Um, People that had print photos are are worried they're going to lose them and don't know how to convert those, if you will, to these digital files. Sure. And then it's the people that have this overwhelm of digital files and don't know what to do. So I thought maybe I can help people so that they don't want to experience that same anxiety I did. And I can help them find this pathway so that they can get all their photos organized so they're ready when they do have a loss or something to celebrate. I'm really curious about your background because I'm looking at the 
you know, geographic systems and, <laughs> yeah. you know, it seems, I mean, what's amazing to me is I actually see a corollary where, you know, that's a very detail oriented. I imagine, I know nothing about it, but it just sounds like it's a very detail oriented, very lot of categorization, a lot of, you know, systems and processes in place to keep track of things. So do you think that played a part in your interest in this is sort of, you know, you were kind of wired that way. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Photo retailers, energize your sales with Share Me Chat, the proven texting platform. Using chat to text on your website keeps your customers connected and buying. See us at Pro and IPI to find out why dealers using Share Me Chat close more sales without adding staff. Find out more at shareme.chat. Yeah, you know what? It's um, You're very intuitive, Gary, um, because I, I never really made that connection. In fact, I, I think I make a joke saying, you know, I got these degrees in geographic information systems, and here I am running a business for photo organizing. And I guess I, I never really thought about the correlation, but you're absolutely right. Um, the interesting thing is I was actually an information systems major initially. Mm -hmm. And I took a geography course and I love, I love visiting national parks. Mm -hmm. um, I love, you know, geography and history. I've just always right. been fascinated by it. So geographic information systems gave me this opportunity to merge these two things that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're right. Um, the, I love solving problems. I love the technology behind it. Um, I love kind of figuring out the puzzle and, and that's really what we're doing, but we're marrying that with, a, you know, real life photos and real life emotions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Gary, I can't tell you how many times we have, we work with clients all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, although we're, our corporate office is here in San Diego. Uh, about 50% of our clients are all over the country, mm -hmm. uh, which is very flattering to know that people want to work with us. But I can't tell you how many times we've had people in the office and we have tissues at every corner of our office because mm -hmm. there's photos are powerful. These memories mm -hmm. evoke so much emotion. And we've got people who, you know, stash these photos away in boxes for months or years, trying to avoid some pain or a story. And mm -hmm. there's, there's truly a psychology behind that. I mean, it's so meaningful and powerful. Mm -hmm. So I think there's things that have come out of creating this business that I, I never even knew were possible. So let's talk about the creating the business piece, right? You know, you've got a corporate office, you've got half a dozen so employees you didn't start that way right? right so so when you started out obviously you looked for some resources and maybe connected with the apo folks who were the apo at the time and yeah. looked at the business yeah. side of it and i want you to talk about that but also i know a lot of photo organizers who don't have storefronts right they're home-based or whatever and mm -hmm. but you know there's a few you know that i've talked to over the years um, who have actually got into storefronts and things like that what was that process like I mean, because because you realize that you can't do it all yourself. You need some help. You need to expand. And that's that's kind of a leap. Yeah, it um, I feel like this should be over a glass of whiskey because that was a big, <laughs> that was a big transition. Um, certainly, again, wasn't even my vision to start a business initially. Um, so I did start out of my home, uh, had a real small 100 square foot, you know, home office, sure. um, brought in, uh, you know, some college kids that I knew to help with some scanning and and figuring it out and. And at the time, I think I always thought that it was going to be bigger than that, because anybody that knows me knows that's just kind of how I am. You know, I don't believe sky's the limit. I reach for the stars. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to. That's right. And I knew I, I always knew I wanted to do something that was bigger than, mm -hmm. you know, what some people would envision. I wanted to help more people. I wanted to grow something that had some meaning behind it. Um, but I think with my background in both the military and in information systems, I'm very process oriented and I'm very right. systems oriented, right? So right. Um, if you ask my team, we have flow charts and training and checklists and um, backup systems. And um, we've even got a Google Classroom training for all of our, you know, new mm -hmm. team members. And I wanted to make sure because everybody's journey is so different and because the inventory they're bringing to the table is unique and the way that they want their photos organized and accessed sometimes is unique. We needed to make sure, and I needed to make sure that we had a plan for that. Right. I recognize that people's photos are so powerful, that they are, are so 
one of a kind, that they are irreplaceable. And I wanted to make sure to preserve those in the best way I could. Um, and the only way that I could figure out to do that is to create these systems and processes. And the only way I could do that is to have a team working with me to make sure that happens. Right. I mean, chart for me, since you're a geography person, chart for me the path, if you will, um, you know, kind of in your home, how fast was that that path where you went from 100 square feet with a couple of college kids to 1400 square feet with six employees with, with a pandemic in between. Right. That, that was a, that was a fun little blip that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> None of us were, of course. Um, so I would say if, if I had, you know, my, my brain trying to kind of wrap my head around the timeline, it took a little bit to get started because I wanted to make sure this was the path I wanted. And I did seek out assistance from um, what was formerly the Association of Personal Photo Organizers, APO, mm -hmm. um, to what's now um, the Photo Managers, yeah. um, founded by Kathy Nelson. And and I started- Shout out to Kathy, shout out. Shout out Kathy, we love Kathy, we really do. Um, and now I'm on the advisory board and, and she and I connect regularly and it's a lot of fun. Uh, but I wanted to acquire as much information as I could. So for the first, you know, year, that's what I was doing is just trying to understand and mm -hmm. understand what's going on in the industry. Cause I couldn't help anybody if I couldn't even organize my own photos. Right. And, and I'll be, I'm just curious, how big was your collection? Do you think? Oh, it was one of the bigger ones. Yeah. yeah. Because like many people, it was, um, you know, all of my personal photos, it was all my parents' photos, um, you know, I've got many siblings and that was my grandfather's. Um, I was the memory keeper and am so not surprisingly the memory keeper in our family. Right. And so I would inherit everything. So we had generations going back right. you know, 150 years. Yeah. yeah. So it was a very large collection and I didn't, I didn't jump into all of it at once, but um, so, and then I spent probably a year or two in my home office where I was, you know, kind of slowly marketing um, and, and getting some clients and visiting them in their home, which was wonderful. And I actually miss, miss that. Um, it's really fun to connect and we've just gotten bigger and, and can't do that quite as much. And then it was, so that was, the fire was 2014, um, June, 2014. And then it was probably a year before I even, you know, thought about quitting my corporate job and kind of thinking that over and then a couple years at home and then we mm. got the corporate um sorry we got the the brick and mortar in august of 2018 and i had one employee so we had this huge 1400 square feet um but again that was my vision is that we were going to grow um mm. and now we're busting at the seams i don't have room for anybody else but it didn't yeah it didn't happen overnight i mean it it took a few years mm -hmm. for us to get to that point. And, and with the pandemic and just how life works in general, um, right. there were times we had more employees and less, and it, it it's cyclical mm -hmm. um, as we try and figure it out uh, before we finally got to a place where I feel like we're really stable. So, so talk a little bit about the cyclical piece, right? Because I do run into that when I talk to people who are in this business, right? And it's it's interesting because there's always people who think, how much stuff should there be for scan? And it's like, no, you don't realize there's trillions of stuff out there. This you we're, we're never going to get through it all. So getting back to the cyclical piece, you know, do you see that with your business? Because I mean, traditionally, photo, whatever, and I'm doing air quotes for those who can't see, yeah. um, you know, is a fourth quarter type thing right where it's you know for holidays or whatever are you do you experience that in the photo organizing space as well that people are like i need to get grandma's photos and make a scrapbook for her for christmas do you see that I, yeah i mean we definitely we don't make scrapbooks but yes i do well, i mean i i, I know, oh, no, I know I'm saying, but that's kind um, of what their thinking is right yeah we we do have um you know when i've looked back at um the years that we've been doing this we can kind of start to see a pattern and q4 for us is absolutely the busiest time uh it's in fact i give my team off um between christmas and new years we just shut the entire office down to give mm -hmm. everybody a break right um because people are you know i want to get this done it's one of those things that we wait decades i'll get right. to it someday right i'll get to it someday and then when they they get this um light bulb of wow there's somebody that can help me and i can actually get this done mm -hmm. and now it becomes a priority which i mm -hmm. love and it's wonderful so 
We do notice that Q4 where people want to get that done for the holidays. Sure. The summers sometimes are a little bit slower, I think, because people are are on vacations. Um, right. Because we've created more of a presence throughout the country right. now, we keep pretty busy throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, but historically, um, and it's when the kids go back to school and parents think, you know, that have kids at home still think, wow, you know, the kids are back. Let me start organizing some of their their school things and school memorabilia and and they realize this is just daunting right do you have a reasonable percentage of customers who maybe start the process and realize oh my gosh this is too much for me i need help and then you've got this sort of thing that's already been started dropped on your counter yes um unfortunately we do uh <laughs> I say that because, of course, we'd love to help clients regardless of right. where their photo collection stands. But um, in fact, we just started working with a client um, a few weeks ago who called me and said, I have spent 20 to 30 hours trying to organize my digital photos for my boys, and I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> she said, I have tried to you know, do online classes. I've tried to transfer things. I don't know. Now at this point, I've got multiple duplicates, you know, and from the collection she has, we probably could have gotten the entire thing organized, every file renamed, duplicates removed, cleaned up the cat memes and the screenshots and created a storage in probably less than 20 hours. Right. So absolutely. We've got people who um, try and do that on their own. And again, I, I, I want to empower people uh, uh, to do that. Um, I would encourage you to give us a call first and let's <laughs> plan right. um, if you want to do part of that on your own. We've actually had people that um, have also sent their photos into um, sometimes some big box companies. Uh, you know, I don't want to downplay any other photo organizing companies. There's different companies that are suitable for different people. Sure. What happens sometimes is people will think, Again, kind of not having that education, understand what they need. They'll take all their print photos, you know, they'll take them all and they'll ship them off to somebody to get them scanned, but they're not organized first. And so what they find is they've satisfied part one, which is preserving their photos, but they can't find any of them because just right. having that scanned with no context, right? right is not, it, it doesn't do any good. So then we get these previously scanned photos and need to go through and assign keywords and and date them and and uh, and sometimes rescan them. So mm -hmm. it does happen, of course, but that's that's kind of part of the industry. Yeah, obviously, this is a in in a lot of people's. Even though you and I would consider it a must have, it is almost a luxury, right? In the sense, so if you can, you know, a lot of it, it, it's a premium service in the sense that you know you're going to pay a professional to do this. So. Not to get specific into, into your exact price, but I was just curious how you decided kind of what was fair. What was what was the resources you figured out to say, okay, was it like per hour? Was it per 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 tens of thousands of pictures? Was it by videos? Was it by slides? Or, you know, or how do you how do you factor in the organizing piece on top of that? And you know, obviously since you're a very process oriented person, you probably had, like you said, workflows, work charts, you kind of figured, okay, this is the throughput. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just curious what that thought process was from the business side of it. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I will say in, in working with a number of other colleagues around the country and really around the world, because there's photo organizers all around the world now, um, which is exciting. Um, this topic is difficult. And I would say that it's particularly difficult for the photo organizing industry because there's not really a benchmark, right? right. If you're going to hire somebody to remodel your bathroom and they said, okay, it's going to be you know, twenty to thirty thousand dollars, depending on what you wanted. You might say, "Well, that makes sense." You know, you got the plumbing, you got the contractors. I I know that it, that's sure. what it costs. If I was gonna ask somebody to get my, you know, to color my hair, and they said it's a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks, I'd say, "Okay, that's reasonable." You know, we've got a benchmark. Uh, what I find is because so many people don't even know that there's professional photo organizers out there right. that. They are often surprised by the cost and not because they don't think the value is there. And, and I hear that all the time. Oh, this is so worth it. I get it. They're just a little surprised because it's an investment. Yeah. It is a financial investment. And, you know, what, what I like to explain to people is this is decades of 
creating this journey, of creating these photos and the memorabilia and the videos. It's decades of creating it. So it's going to take, not decades, but it's going to take a little time to get organized sure. um, and to satisfy what clients want. And so I am always looking at different ways to try and find that um, spot where I can make sure my team is taken care of. I really value my team members tremendously. Um, and right. I want them to be taken care of. But of course, I want our clients to feel like they're getting the value. Right. Um, so the way that we bill currently um, is our services are typically billed hourly. Mm -hmm. And then things like um, conversions and transfers, like digitizing mm -hmm. or transfer home movies, um, we digitize print photos, memorabilia, slides, negatives, et cetera. We can quantify that uh, a little bit easier through some data sure. analysis, right? So we can do that per item. So are you doing it all of that in-house? Yeah, um, everything happens here. Nobody takes anything home. Nobody works remotely. It's something I really pride ourselves on is that it's, I think it's difficult enough for clients to feel comfortable to hand these mm -hmm. precious memories off to us. Oh, I don't yeah, want exactly. to that they're going somewhere else. There are a couple of things that we do outsource, but we always let the clients know and get their permission before we do right. that. Um, but that's why that's, I think one thing that makes 2000 paces photo organizing unique is that we don't just focus on print or digitizing or digital or videos. We really try and we try and be a one-stop shop so sure. that clients can consistently come back. So we have a number of clients on a monthly maintenance plan. So when we're done right. organizing their photos, we continue organizing them, the mm -hmm. photos they take on their phone on a monthly basis. Well, that's what I want to talk about because I remember that was sort of starting to become a thing yeah. with Apple slash photo managers about, gosh, I don't know what, about six, eight years ago, they started talking about sort of the maintenance plan, right? Yeah. You know, where you go in and you you get to look at people's, I don't know whether they put them into Google Photos or or what, I mean, whatever online, then they kind of call them. And like you said, so when, and it's consistent with what their historical images are, like you said, the keywording and all that stuff is super important. Right. Yeah. I mean, the the idea in a nutshell is, um, and, and again, everybody's situation is a little unique, but we, we have to have some kind of standardization, right? And that's difficult right. to do when there's so much variability. Right. But the idea is that once we create this foundational um, archive, if you will, of mm -hmm. their photos, then every month as they're taking more, we access their digital photos, we download them, we rename mm -hmm. them up facial recognition, and we put them onto whatever their online storage is. Mm -hmm. And so they just got these kind of magic elves working behind the scenes. <laughs> um, and, you know, what I, what I like to say is, I want you to focus on making the memories. Let us worry about organizing them. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit for a few minutes about kind of like the technology platforms you use, right? Because there's a lot out there, right? There's a lot of partnerships out there. There's a lot of people who say they can do some things. Um, a lot of people trying to apply a lot of AI to some of this stuff and whether they're successful or not, we'll find out, you know, kind of like, how did you, who, who are kind of your technology partners that you work with and, and why did you pick them? Sure. So I, you know, Gary, one thing I will say is I made a commitment to myself and the company that we were never going to be myopic in the technology that we're working with. We're not going to work with somebody because we get a kickback or a deal. And we're also not going to employ just one system. And I know some people like to do that. You can do everything in this system. Um, I just, I think that that causes problems. Um, it's, it's one of the reasons that I don't always recommend that people store their photos in an Apple ecosystem on iCloud um, because it is so proprietary. And it's really important to me. One of the biggest things that I share with our clients is I don't want your photos to be held hostage. I wouldn't want mine to be held hostage. I want you to be able to access them, change them, modify them as you can. So sure. um, when we use all the technology, we provide clients with an external hard drive that's formatted for both a Mac and a PC, um, unless they want it for a specific operating system. Um, and it's organized in a native file system. So it's not uh, dependent on any uh, proprietary software. You don't have to worry about updates. Now, in addition to that, of course, we'll back it up on something else. But some of the technology, I mean, we use everything from, we'll use Adobe Lightroom, of course, um, for facial recognition. We use a number of other programs that, um, we use one program to find duplicates. We use, actually, we have two different programs to find duplicates. Mm -hmm. uh, we use ooh, another- ooh, Plug, plug. 
I you want, want me to, to tell you? Yeah, okay. sure. absolutely. Um, I want to know. But one of the ones we use is Photo Sweeper, and I think it's it's absolutely one of the best out there. Okay. Um, they're, they're phenomenal. We're testing out a couple others. So I don't want to say anything quite yet, but um, Photo Sweeper is not always great at finding the videos. There's a number of, you know, the videos, because we're all taking this little snippet videos now instead of just the photos. So that's part of the whole organization. We use a better finder rename. Yep. Um, for renaming, right? We'll Thumbs use, up for that one. I do use that. Oh, one. love it! I I don't know how anybody organizes without a better finder rename. They are by far my favorite program to rename and categorize. Um, mm. We'll use a big name folder machine to pull photos out if we need to. You know, we have Photo Mechanic to assign EXIF data at times and mm. for various other things. We have a number of Lightroom plugins and scripts, Apple scripts that we write. Um, or have been written for us to try and apply. Sure. Uh, so we kind of take a little bit of this and that. Mm -hmm. And then for storage, um, for backup and storage, often SmugMug is kind of our go-to for a number of different reasons. We really like working with them. We like what they provide. I like their privacy aspect. I mm -hmm. like that they're only focused on photos and uh, that we don't have to worry about ads and things like that. We're also partnered with a company called Image AI. Um, it's a San Diego based company. They're all over the world and they provide, there's where your AI comes in, um, mm -hmm. AI specifically for photos. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we've been testing out their software and it's been incredible. It's just, that's, you know, that's where we're heading, but we want to do it ethically and we want to do it correctly, mm -hmm. um, as accurately as we possibly can. So, right. yeah. And AI is, is great. I mean, you know, but it's, it's not perfect. Yeah. No, not there. No, I <laughs> no, no, it's not. I mean, it's a great tool, but it's not, not perfect. Okay. You know, kind of, you've got into the, I got into the business thing and now I'm running the business thing. What is your objective with your business to, you know, I mean, you've kind of got this national clientele going. Um, what are your thoughts about the future of your business and the industry really? Well, the future of the industry, I mean, it's, it's, I think we're just at the precipice of, of something phenomenal. And I think with all the digital overwhelm um, and all the, the print photos and things we're inheriting as the baby boomer generation, you know, our largest population is, is, uh, you know, unfortunately passing away, we're inheriting everything. And so, and we're taking more photos than we ever have because it's so easy on our phones. Right. But the need for professional organizers is, I think, more um, necessary than ever. I think there's so much, there's so many resources out there, right? That it's, it's it kind of goes back to why I felt like creating this business was important is right. having somebody who can kind of guide you through this chaos of mm -hmm. Sure. Um, of what's going on. And there's a lot of really good people out there that, that I work with that can do that. So, so I think the photo or organizing industry, absolutely. I mean, you see uh, the, the money and the um, companies that are getting involved and wanting to partner. Um, this is absolutely, I think in the next three to five years, just going to be a common, a common um, industry that people just know exists. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, I, I, uh, I love being on the forefront of what's happening in mm -hmm. photo organizing. Um, our team works really hard to provide the best service. We like to, um, we've been called the Tiffany's of photo organizing. Um, I always like to tell people, I know, so bougie, but. Yeah. Um, uh, Does anyone still get that reference anymore though? Right. <laughs> what's that? If, will anybody get it? Well, at the Tiffany reference, right? It's not yeah, quite yeah. what it used to be in terms. Of, I'm not sure what the high-end brand is these days, but. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. But the. The, the Tiffany's aspect is that we do set the bar high and we want to make sure that we're doing the best we can for our clients. We do you deliver the hard drive in a in a blue box is the question. Right. It's not blue. It's black, but okay. it is a, it's a protected box. That's a great point. But I like to say that we marry um, sort of that Tiffany's with an intimate bed and breakfast because personally, I speak with everybody um I would say 90% of the people who are inquiring into our business and talk to them. That's why we offer a free consultation because mm -hmm. I want to get to know you. And I want you to get to know us. I want you to know what right. it is we're providing. Right. Uh, so as far as where, where I'd like to see um, 2000 paces go, I, I just want to continue to help people. I want to mm -hmm. continue to be mm -hmm. on the forefront of what's happening. I'd love for people to recognize us as mm -hmm. 
um, a leader in the industry in, in what we're trying to provide. And most importantly, I, I can't stress it enough that when we get emails or text messages or calls from clients that because they simply wanted to say, I just gave this gift to my adult children and there were tears, or we just watched the video again that you created or converted. And they're, you know, a year after we've worked with them or they come back to, I had a client um, last week that brought her friend up here with boxes and boxes of photos and said, I want you to help her the same way you help me. Right. It's, it's powerful and it's rewarding. And I, I want to continue to do that for as many people as we can. So where can people go to get more information about 2000 Paces for photo organizing and geospatial stuff? <laughs> well, I can't help with that anymore. <laughs> despite, despite the education, I'm, I'm, I'm far from it. Um, but in fact, my husband would say I have no sense of direction and it's ironic that I have to go <laughs> geography. Um, but 2000paces.com, so it's 2000paces.com. Um, and of course, we're um, I'm on LinkedIn and we have a business LinkedIn and uh, uh, on Pinterest and Instagram and, and Facebook. And um, right on our website, there's an opportunity to click for a consultation if anybody's just interested in chatting, mm -hmm. um, whether it's for your own personal collection mm -hmm. or a family members, or if you're even thinking about starting a business like this. I love to encourage people. There's so many people out there that need help that I, mm -hmm. I'm, I love to share. And we may as well plug the photo managers conference while we're here, if you can, because yes. you'll be there, right? So tell us I will. To, to, where is that and uh, when is it? Yeah. So the photo managers, again, I'm on the advisory board and um, it's going to be April, I think, 2nd to the 6th. Mm -hmm. You can go to thephotomanagers.com um, or you can reach out to me and I can connect you. It's in Columbus, Ohio this year. We do have a conference every year. I think that surprises people. And we have um, photo organized from all over the world, uh, South Africa, Australia, England, Brazil, Scotland. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to, I think there's going to be some really exciting keynote speakers this year. Mm -hmm. um, and they have breakout sessions and courses and there's a whole certificate program. So um, it, it really is very, very exciting. Well, great, Rachel. Great to meet you. Hope to connect with you in the future, maybe in person. Uh, we did actually meet in person at the Visual First event, but this is yeah. the, but now we're chatting and hope to see you again <laughs> soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gary. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.